I was trained in the art of silence by a magician named Fear. He's good. He even looks like me in the mirror, so he slipped into my mind and I studied him well. I could float in a room and no one would tell. He taught me to squeeze the life out my lungs, how to swallow my words, how to bite my own tongue. It's just a trick. A sleight of the hands over your lips. Silence is a strange thing. It's hard to describe, but you can feel it inside. It rests in the darkness. But I, I was born on the edge of the horizon. All suns were built to rise. I was made to break this dawn and bleed ink on the sky. So I picked up a pen, gripped it, tightened my fists, and I wrote my first poem on the ink of a solar eclipse. I found a bottle of light. Tugged deep from within, so I opened it up and exhaled life into the wind. My voice is a rose stem cut from the thicket. I'll float petals to your heart, but I'll plant thorns in your throat. My words are beautiful, but hard to swallow and hold. I was trained in silence by an illusion of fear. I told y'all he was good. He even looked like me in the mirror, but I broke the spell. The answer is clear. I breathe words in the air. They're written in my lungs. Poetry is a part of me. Better believe it. That's why I'm here. How y'all doing, Switchpoint? My name is Will McInerney, and as you might be able to guess, I am a poet, among some other things that I do in my life, and I am truly, truly honored to be here with you all today. Um, my journey to this point is long and winding, and that's strange considering the fact that I was born like 10 miles that way. Um, but to give you the short story, about eight years ago, I quit my job as training to be an electrical engineer and decided that I wanted to be a poet and that poetry was the first thing in my life that I felt like really empowered me to be an agent of change, really empowered me to help mold the world around me in a way that was equitable and just for everyone. And I believe that poetry, the ancient oral tradition of poetry that is prevalent in every society around the world that dates as old as human beings ourselves is a powerful, creative tool that we can use to change the world. About seven years ago, I helped start a nonprofit called Sacrificial Poets. Sacrificial Poets uses poetry, uses hip hop and spoken word arts education to help young people in the schools in North Carolina empower themselves, to help young people tell their story, specifically looking at underserved populations, specifically looking at people who are marginalized and silenced. That poem I just shared with you was about my journey breaking my own silence. And today, building on the work of things like Sacrificial Poets, building on the work of powerful communities like we have right here, I want to talk to you about a new initiative that I started in the past year with my partner, Mohanan Malah, called Stories with a Heartbeat. Stories with a Heartbeat is a program that uses the power of creative storytelling, that uses the power of poetry to bring the human face forward and to help global health NGOs tell authentic, powerful, creative, and dynamic stories that are rooted in the agency of the people themselves, that are not seeking to exploit these stories, but are seeking to find a way to tell them in an authentic, engaging way because we are in the business of breaking silence. We are in the business of interrupting apathy. And all of this started about one year ago today in that back corner. I came to Switchpoint last year and did a poem about some of my work in the Palestinian West Bank. And after that, I had a conversation with another presenter, a man named Dr. Zahir Salou, the president of the Syrian American Medical Society. And Dr. Salou and I were talking right over there in that back corner and we are talking about the apathy surrounding the human condition of the Syrian refugee population that was growing by the millions. We are talking about the disconnect that people had in this world relating Syrians to human beings. We are talking about the emergence of jihadism 
and the resistance and how that was going to come to dominate the conversation, despite the fact that it did not represent the majority, let alone even a numerous percentage of how actual Syrians felt. And so we partnered that day and we decided through a simple exchange of emails and phone conversations that we wanted to use the power of poetry to help SAMS, the Syrian American Medical Society, tell the story of their work. We identified two key issues, two key issues that were prevalent in SAMS work. Dr. Saul told me that he went to numerous, countless conferences, workshops, fundraisers, and advocacy events, and that he was having a hard time building the connection. He was having a hard time telling the authentic story. The sad reality is we live in a world full of disconnects. In conflict studies, there's a theory, there's a model called the pyramid of hate. The pyramid of hate is a representation of systematic hate and violence in our world. And at the top of the pyramid, the most severe, the most intense, the most violent form of hate, yet the least common, is something like war or genocide. These things do not happen all the time, but when they do happen, the toll, the impact, the scale is huge. But as you traverse down the pyramid, when you reach the base, the most common form of hate in our world, the most common form of violence in our world, yet the least severe, is a disconnection. Our inability to see each other, our inability to hear, to listen to each other, our inability to fully appreciate and value each other as human beings. That disconnect is the source of the violence. That disconnect comes forth in silence, comes forth in apathy. On the other end of the spectrum, the information that we do have oftentimes is simplified, sensationalized, and dehumanized. Within all sectors of the economy, we see powerful stories being told. But sometimes these powerful stories are told at the expense of the people that they are being told about. And that is unacceptable. And that itself is a form of hate. That itself is a form of violence. And so what we wanted to do, we wanted to explore the complexity of the Syrian condition. We wanted to explore the powerful, resilient, inspirational stories that were going on in Syria. And we wanted to use those stories to help build connections, to help people understand the importance of what was going on in Syria and help them understand how they could create a difference. Stories with a Heartbeat is aimed at building connections, is aimed at revealing the complexity of the human condition, is aimed at remaining authentic, respecting the agency of the people, and is aimed at bringing that human face forward, amplifying the heartbeats so that we truly can understand, appreciate, recognize, and value each other. And each one of those steps is crucially important. Storytelling has been around as long as human beings have. There are nuances to it. There is power to it. And we must respect this form, and we must understand the great ways to tell it. And I'm really honored to be in this lineup of speakers and feel the beautiful synergy of all of their presentations, both before and after to come. Because what you all do in this room is so critically important. And there is a huge disconnect between the people in this room and the general population. And that disconnect stems from our inability to fully communicate. And now I'm not saying that poetry is the only way to do it. There are lots of creative ways to communicate, but poetry is a uniquely powerful outlet to understand these complexities. SAMS does a lot of work with helping provide medicine. On the Turkish-Syrian border, there is a huge, huge shortage of all types of life-saving and life-sustaining medicines. And I could give you facts and statistics all day that tell you how much of a shortage there is. But what we've done is we refocus that narrative and we tell you the story of Dr. Bari. Dr. Bari is a forensic specialist from Aleppo. He used to sign the death certificates. And the government put a gun to his head and told him how to sign them. You can't write gunshot wounds down, he says. There were always gunshot wounds. One day, they brought him 50 bodies, just bags, no names. 
he started signing the certificates, and he dropped his pen. He tells me he couldn't sign his name to those bloody bodies. They had no names, he tells me. They had no names, just numbers. Saying no to the government has consequences. Dr. Body became a wanted man, so he fled to Turkey, where he works at the SAM-supported clinic now. The story of the shortage of medicine is found in the strength of a man with a silver blue cap pen who said no to the government. The story of a shortage of medicine is found in the resilience it takes to risk everything. Dr. Body will shake your hand and smile when you meet him. I saw him three weeks ago. And he would want you to know that whether we provide him medicine or not, he has learned to doctor without. He has learned to survive without. The story of a shortage of medicine is not a sad story that we should cry over. The story of a shortage of medicine is a story that we should compel ourselves to do something about. We should compel ourselves to find a way to support Dr. Body. About a month ago, a friend of mine was killed in this community. His wife's name was Yusur Abu Salah. Yusur was an amazing human being. And in my past trip to the Turkish-Syrian border, I stumbled upon a dental clinic where Yusur volunteered. This is a picture of a hand-drawn sign that still hangs in the Keyless Dental Clinic today from Yusur. Sam's needs volunteers. And the impact of one person is incalculable. But there are ways to define it. There are ways to show it. The metaphor that is Yusur Abu Salah is far greater than any story of a Chapel Hill shooting, of a murder, of a hate-filled man. The story of Yusur Abu Salah is when you walk into the dental clinic and you say her name, all three workers cry instantly. They don't cry because they miss her. They cry because they know how powerful she was. The story of a volunteer is something that we must find within ourselves if we are to be the agents of change. 80% of the news about Syria seems to be about ISIS, about Daesh, about Al-Qaeda, about Al-Nusra, about jihadists. Yes, they exist. Yes, they are real. But who are the real victims of these movements? The real victims are the Syrian people themselves. Osama is a taxi driver now who helps to provide logistical support for SAMs. Two years ago, Osama was a general in the Free Syrian Army, fighting ISIS on the front lines, fighting the Syrian regime on the front lines, and that's when he lost his leg. Osama doesn't want our tears. Osama doesn't want our pity. Osama wants his story to be told. He wants us to know that Syrians are living and thriving and surviving, and that there is a role for the global community to play. These are the stories that we tell through poetic, long-form performances. We tell these stories not because we want you just to listen. We tell these stories because we want to bring them to life. We utilize the voices of the people themselves. We utilize the photos and the videos of the people themselves because we believe that we don't just need to understand. We believe that we truly need to connect with the human suffering, truly need to connect with the human resilience if we are to be agents of change. And I would argue with you today that poetry, that the ancient human tradition of poetry is such a powerful, an effective way to create that change. It is something that is intrinsic to the human condition. It is a powerful form of strategic communication. It helps not just empower organizations, but more importantly, help empower people that those organizations serve. It helps amplify the heartbeats, and it helps break that silence. Poetry helped me break my own personal silence. Sacrificial Poets uses poetry to break silence in public, class, public school classrooms in North Carolina. And Stories with a Heartbeat is trying to break that silence at a global level. Using these powerful stories, using the human tradition of storytelling to help connect in an authentic way that respects 
and understands the power of these stories. I would love to continue this conversation with you all. I think poetry is a powerful medium that has something buried within all of us, and I thank you for the time.